And now, he said, sorting, sorting, sorting the wig out so we can see, the next battle, load, ooh, load from tape, is the Battle of Guildford. And Guildford, or off, not say with the, not with the D, Guildford Courthouse, here we go, let's get that loaded, all spelt without the D, was in real life a British victory um, at heavy cost in basically in, in Greensboro, uh, North Carolina. The British under Cornwallis, Wallace have been pursuing the American force for some time. Finally, Green commanded the American force to make it stand in some fields outside the small town of Guildford Courthouse. The American force was much larger than the British. Hooray! But many of the troops were militiamen who had little training and poor morale. In the actual battle, over a thousand of the American militiamen fled in the first British advance. So let's see how that goes. Indeed! Loyalist coffin makers! They, you, know, uh, actually, uh, you, you can't tell. I'm changing hats. I promised you hats. I promised you cosplay. That's more like it. You can you can see the wig and the hat now, rather than it all merged into one. So we're ready to play. You can play two players as well. So how many human players? You can have one or two players. One human player. I'm going to be the Americans this time, so I'm wearing my American hat. Again, difficulty five. So this time, I believe, I outnumber the, the baddies. The goodies now outnumber the baddies, but the goodies soldiers are a bit shit, apparently. I presume that the yellow little square, which is really hard to see, is Guildford Courthouse. But there's scattered light woods. Cowpens was very thick woods, which didn't do me much bloody good at all. But it's in the open. That's the courthouse. Let's move my mouse. There we are. I hope, I hope all is well anyway. I'll get to I'll get to pay a tune. Because the proper proper American song isn't out yet. Here we are. Those are the baddies. They've got infantry. Is that a rifleman? Indeed. So, British artillery is reloading. British 33rd Regiment is shooting at my guys who instantly bottle it. To be fair, I would, I would, it's not doing, not doing so well here, are we? Would you, but 23rd British foot are marching, marching up to advance. Now, as you can see, I've got, you might, you, I say, as you can see, I can just about see that I've got a little yellow, a little cannon on the right hand side. So, I'm going to try and lure them onto my cannon. There were the Hessians there, the German mercenaries, who have, who have a thousand men there. The British grenadiers, the elite, very high morale. The first guards, again, excellent morale. And the Jaegers, now these guys are armed with rifles. These are German, German troops armed with rifles. So I'm going to try and charge. And I've gone in charging because I was hoping to go for the cannon, but he didn't go for the cannon. He went for the uh, infantry. So that's, that's going to delay them when I get into the woods. So I'm going to get my North Carolina militia into the woods. Just... Into the woods to start with. Yeah, let's move to the west. And let's go six spaces, which gets me into the woods. We have got riflemen. We like riflemen. Again, we're going to move, go west, all the way. Hopefully, I'll type 10, not 1. I think I'll probably type 1, then, because I'm an idiot. I'll type 1. But this is a big, powerful unit of militiamen, but they're shit. Moran is very low. We're going to just move one space. M to move. Nine, face of the clock, and let's go three spaces, which gets me into the woods. So I think woods take three movement points, maybe. Him, I'm going to retreat into the woods. Six spaces, which seems to be be two spaces. It's a bit vague, isn't it? And this guy's going to be going to reload. Reload the cannon. 
See, white on green is a bit hard to see as well. Now, blue, blue on green, because blue on the spectrum is dark, that would, be quite, that would have been quite good. Because these aren't French shots. If they were French shots, it would be, be um, appropriate if they were white. Uh, move to the east. Two spaces. There we go, into the woods. So I've sacrificed my cavalry to start with. And they're all dead. So now they're going to advance and get me. Unfortunately, I've got, I've got some guys with rifles who can only fire every other turn. But hopefully they'll do some good. So this guy's got very look, look that very low morale. I think uh, they've been charged by cavalry and they don't like it. Highlanders, high morale. Hessians, good morale. Hopefully we're enjoying this. It's, it's not, not a battle. Okay, and I said you can make it your own battle. So there's lots of battles on Wikipedia. And you can cho choose what you, what you want, really. And I've reinforced the arrival on different turns and so on and so forth. And you can either have cavalry, musketmen, riflemen and artillery. And different levels of morale. So the rifles are now loaded, so they're now advancing. So I shot at, at extreme range, which was a bit of a waste. My riflemen are going to reload. Mus musketmen don't need to reload because basically they're, all, they're already uh, loaded. So we're going to move to the west. A few, a, I said ten, but he didn't go very far, did he, lazy bastards? Move to the east. The direction stuff is a bit weird. Because so it's not really space to work a, a, a vague expression of intent. So that, that was quite a long range. We could kill 40 men, though, which isn't bad. And we're going to just do nothing. We're going to wait and see. Guildford Courthouse. Battle of Guildford Courthouse was in March the 15th, 1781. So the Redcoats red have been chasing us around, trying to lure us into battle. Oof. And they're all dead. So I... You can indeed ask. Um, I'm a big fan of Desert Rats by CCS. The Desert, Rat, the Desert Rats Vulcan Arnhem. I really like Desert Rats. Um, it's got lots and lots of depth to it when you've got to get into it. You're quite all right. I also quite like The General. Uh, I did a video, video on The General. I even fixed The General because The General has some bugs in it. Uh, but I do like The General. The General was a clever game. Uh, it didn't quite work, but it was good. But Desert, Desert Rats by um, R.T. Smith. Not the same as Robert Smith of the Cure. Though. So my rifleman killed 114 men there. So these guys are going to fire. That's, that was a waste of their bullets, really. We're not going to fire. Yet. And the cannons are going to reload. I do, I do like these war games. Um, they're interesting. Especially ones that give you, give you, give you interesting choices of what, what, what you can and can't do. Vikings is pretty good. Um, it's got two battles in it. One of which is really good. Battle of Stamford Bridge. And the one is a bit... <laughs> Battle of the Menai Straits. I don't think... I think, I, think I, just, I think I just lost a thousand men. I think I think that that unit. Yes, yeah. Rebel size that like like especially it's a bit like this. It's very it's not individual men, but it's a very similar sort of style. Especially the, especially said the first one, multiple. Yeah, that unit there. I'd th I'd over thirteen hundred men. They lost one hundred and thirty, and they all bottled it. This is a bad thing. So now relying on my American cannon, uh, best cannon in the world, to do the job. Now, they've, not even, they've not even used their rifles yet, the British. British Jaegers. And their Jaeger bombs. So I'm going to retreat 
Otherwise, I'm going to get wiped out. And then reload in due course. Yes. That helps a little bit. And we're, just, we're, just wait, wait, we're gonna get them to approach us and then just shoot them. Yes, yeah, so I look at games. I type basically. I, I look at various, often type in games on my YouTube. I type them in, have a look at them, go, yeah, that's all right, and then try and improve them in some fashion. Plus, there's usually cosplay and general shenanigans. So we're currently working on the Battle of Waterloo. Perhaps I'm Benedict Arnold. He was. He was. He was a sneaky one. He kept changing sides, didn't he? Benedict Arnold. I know there was, a, there was a general in the, in the American Civil War who was shit, but they had to keep him because he was really good for morale. Because he was a, he was a German guy. A lot of the German 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 Americans joined up to fight with him because he was like an ex-revolutionary or something. Um, and they're, oh, they're going to fight with him, but even though he was just a really shit general, but they had to keep, they had to keep him on. We're holding our fire for now. But they're four fifths Virginian. Reload. And nothing yet. Hopefully, when they come, when they come out of the woods. Ah. Thank you very much, Mr. Ponder. I shall, I shall, have, oof, I shall, have, a, I shall have a check out after the stream. Yeah, I was away last week on a lovely cruise. It was very, very nice. So now he's in the open. Hopefully I can just shoot the shit out. Oh, Battle of New Orleans. Yes. Um, ever after the Battle of New Orleans. Which we, we saw... That was um, Battle War of 1812, wasn't it? It sort of happened, also happened after the war was over. Because but they didn't know it yet. I think the same happened. that The last battle of the, of the Napoleonic Wars was a French victory. After it, all, it was all over. Um, basically the French... The bloke... I basically suppressed the royalist revolt in the Vendée, and they found oh, basically Napoleon's defeated. Oh, never mind then. Let's go home then. You're not going to fire. You fire at a unit of the um, of your choice, and we need to reload. So I'm going to retreat to the north east a bit. Clock face. Direct the direction of the clock face. But now I can fire with my cannon, hopefully. Not yet with the muskets. The first shot of muskets is 40% more effective. Fire! 133 men killed. Okay, wait a little bit. So they'll advance, so then, we, then, we'll, sh then we'll start shooting. Because that guy's really at long range, he has to reload. So we're taking a lot, a lot of casualties already. Oh, they're shooting at my cannon. I do not like that. Especially because I might, might wipe out my cannon. That's my, that's my best unit. I could move the cannon by limbering it, but then what's the, what's the point of that? It'll take me ages to um, fire. Whew, right. It's getting a bit, a bit tense now. I could do with some reinforcements. Right, let's fire. Oh. Let's reload. That's better. Rifle, rifle will get only five watts every other turn. So that was a long range of muskets. Reload. So that's a very long range of muskets, but you know, it's worth, 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 it's worth a shot, literally. It's worth a shot. Again, that shot was extreme range for artillery. Yeah, yeah, you're not, you're not gonna do jack shit, are you? Ooh, but that volley range wiped out my cannon. This is catastrophic news for America. This is very bad news for America. Now, hopefully, my rifleman could do some good. Remember, just like Sharp, they only fire once every, once every other turn. 
is fire one to reload the next. Because fire because rifles also were rifled muskets. You had to put the um you had to sort of screw in the ball. And that took a long while. Then it had to hammer it home. Was muskets you dropped the ball in, it was much faster. Fire! A hundred men killed. A hundred and fifty riflemen killed a hundred men. So how are six hundred musket men killed twenty one men? Because muskets are sh short range and are a bit rubbish. Effective, they're in groups. That's why the, in the Napoleonic Wars, the French had columns. Because marching in a column is quite easy. It's, you know, you don't need to be very well trained to march in a column. Firing a musket well in battle in a line was more effective, but you need to make more training. Well, they just get here, march in, go forward. Here are the British Grenadiers. We've now lost our riflemen. This is a very bad thing for America. Now the Jaegers are moving up. They are loaded. So got th they're going to wipe out one of our units. If I'm not careful. We are in cover, thankfully. I reckon the, I reckon the Jaegers are the, the British Jaegers are going to wipe out a unit in one shot. Because they, they they know how to shoot those boys. It's not going to work well, is it? Today is also the day of the Battle of, of, of Hattin in 1187, by the way. Yep. T Rifleman wiped out the entire unit. Ouch. So we've got 600, 600 musketeers. Now, now we get to see that. Now that, we're a, bit, we're a lot closer, so we've got a lot more damage. But then they're also a lot closer, so they also do a lot more damage. There's only 40 men there. So 40 musketeers versus 600. One of the British units has, has bottled it. These guys have only got 73 men, so they're quite small now. They get turned into 50 men. We're in cover, though they're not. So if we can hold our morale, our big unit might, might do some good. And the Jaegers bombs are going to reload. Our morale is pitifully low. However, wiping out a unit, that's, that's got to help. We're in cover in extreme range. They're not going to do anything. 40 men here. So one in four men hit. 73 Highlanders. The Grenadiers are pretty good. And they've made us all like it. A bad day. So, we had more casualties than the British this time, unusually, unusually for one of my, my battles, but got 558 points. How did we do compared to historically? So historically, um, Guildford Courthouse, it was a British victory. Um, the British had 93 killed, but 408 wounded. Whereas the Americans had 94 killed, 200 wounded, and a thousand missing. So now the last battle of the evening is going to be don't load for microdrive. Utah Springs. Oh, so I can't spell. And as we know, 